हेलो फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर रुचिका गर्ग टुडे वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एनीमिया एंड प्रेगनेंसी सो वी नो दैट एनीमिया इज़ द कॉमनेस्ट मेडिकल डिजॉर्डर इन प्रेगनेंसी एंड इट हैज़ अ वेरी हाई प्रिवलेंस इन इंडिया एंड आयरन डिफिशेंसी एनीमिया न्यूट्रिशनल एनीमिया इज़ द मोस्ट कॉमन एनीमिया एंड इट इज़ एन इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर फॉर मेटर्नल एंड पेरीनेटल मॉर्बिडिटी एंड मोर्टैलिटी बोथ एज अ डायरेक्ट एज वेल एज एन इनडायरेक्ट कॉज so what is anemia a condition where circulating hemoglobin levels are lower than normal in non pregnant patient the hemoglobin less than 12 g percent is called anemia whereas in pregnant women according to who hemoglobin less than 11 g percent is anemia and hematocrit less than 33 percent according to the cdc hemoglobin less than 11 g percent in the first and third trimester is anemia and in second trimester hemoglobin less than 10.5 g percent so what is the normal hemoglobin level in preg uh, in non pregnant it is less than 12 g percent is anemia in pregnant women hemoglobin less than 11 g percent is anemia but according to the icmr how to classify anemia mild moderate and severe so hemoglobin 10 to 10.9 is gram percent is mild anemia from 7 to 9.9 is moderate anemia and less than 7 is severe and less than 4 gram percent is very severe anemia so how to classify anemia less than 4 is very severe less than 7 gram percent is severe anemia and 7 to 9.9 is moderate whereas 10 to 9.10.9 10 is mild anemia so what are the causes of anemia in pregnancy so there are many causes the most important are nutritional or iron deficiency anemia pre pregnancy poor nutrition and iron folate and vitamin b deficiency are also important so chronic blood loss as in case of hookworm infestation or in cases of malaria then repeated successive pregnancies as in multiparity or in twin pregnancy it's common or if there is a blood loss acute blood loss like in case of antepartum hemorrhage or in case of postpartum hemorrhage sometimes recurrent uti may cause anemia due to impaired erythropoiesis then there may be hemolytic anemias then there may be hemoglobinopathies like thalassemia sickle cell anemia or rarely any aplastic anemia and anemia of chronic diseases like tuberculosis so what is the pathophysiology basically what happens in pregnancy is the plasma volume is increased by 40 to 50% but there is the uh, blood volume is also increased erythropoiesis is also increased the rbc volume is also increased but the blood volume is increased more than the rbc volume so there is relative hemodilution so this leads to physiological anemia of pregnancy and with each successive pregnancy the iron stores are depleted so let us revise what we have studied till now so there is a physiological anemia of pregnancy which is because of the hemodilution because the plasma volume and the rbc volume both are increased but the plasma volume is increased more than the rbc volume so leading to physiological anemia of pregnancy and what are the causes of anemia in pregnancy mainly nutritional anemia because of iron deficiency or dimorphic anemia is because of vitamin b12 deficiency or folate deficiency then we have hemolytic anemia then we have hemoglobinopathies aplastic anemia blood loss anemia and anemia due to chronic diseases in india anemia due to chronic blood loss due to hookworm malaria is also common and bleeding piles may also cause anemia so actually there is more iron requirement during pregnancy why because 300 mg extra is required for the fetus 50 g for the placenta red cell mass is increase 500 g and basically there are 220 mg basal losses and during delivery also 250 mg iron is lost so during pregnancy an extra 1000 mg of iron is required so due to cessation of menses and contraction of blood volume after delivery iron conservation is there which is amounts to around 400 mg so what are the various factors required for erythropoiesis basically for the synthesis of globin proteins are required 
for the synthesis of iron heme iron is required and certain hormones like erythropoietin erythropoietin is produced from the kidney it stimulates stem cells in the bone marrow then hormones like thyroxine and androgens are also required and trace elements and micronutrients like zinc which is an important factor for protein synthesis and nucleic acid metabolism and cobalt and copper are also required so what are the various factors required so certain micronutrients vitamin b12 iron protein and erythropoietin hormone mainly so coming to vitamins which which are required vitamin b12 it is required for rna synthesis folic acid is required for dna synthesis vitamin c is required for the conversion of folic acid to folinic acid and it also enhances absorption of iron from the small intestine pyridoxine is also an adjunct in erythropoiesis so vitamin a is required for cell growth differentiation and in maintenance of integrity of epithelium immune function what are the pharmacokinetics normal diet contains about 400 mg of iron so absorption of iron is very less only about 5 to 10% of iron in a is absorbed and whereas in a pure vegetarian diet only 3 to 4% of iron can be absorbed so in early pregnancy the daily iron requirement is 2 to 3 mg and it rises to 6 to 7 mg in later pregnancy so daily supplementation of about 40 to 60 mg of iron is required and folic acid is re- required in doses of 400 to 600 microgram per day in strict vegetarian vitamin b12 is also deficient so let us see basically you can see daily diet 10 to 20 mg iron is taken and iron is transported in the form of transferrin and uh, out of which 75% is absorbed for hemoglobin synthesis and 10 to 20% is stored as ferritin and 5 to 15% for other processes and rest 1 to 2 mg iron is daily lost so absorption is only 1 to 2 mg iron per daily so what are the various coming to symptoms of iron deficiency anemia mild anemia may be asymptomatic there may be pallor weakness fatigue dyspnea palpitations and swelling over feet and body when the anemia is severe these were the signs like the patient will be having easy fatigability weakness pallor saans phool jana now coming to signs facial puffiness raised jvp pallor tachycardia tachypnea and in severe iron deficiency the patient may land into congestive heart failure leading to creps in lung bases hepatosplenomegaly there may be pitting edema initially uh, the pitting edema may be on the abdominal wall on the legs then abdominal wall then into sacrum also there may be hemic murmur soft systolic murmur in congestive heart failure and then we have changes in the tongue like glossitis then we have stomatitis chiliosis and brittle hair so these are the symptoms the most important is severe anemia may cause the patient to land into congestive heart failure leading to creps in the lung bases and severe edema so what is the effect of anemia on pregnancy it leads to higher chances of pregnancy complications like pre eclampsia abrupt show placenta preterm labor and these patients are predisposed to infections like uti puerperal sepsis pph subinvolution of uterus and lactation failure so and there may be increased mortality because of chf leading to cerebral anoxia like sepsis and thromboembolism now coming to what effect of anemia on the fetus and neonate there are more chances of abortion more chances of iugr low birth weight babies intrauterine fetal deaths more preterm babies low abgar square birth and these neonates are also more susceptible for anemia and infections these have higher perinatal mortality and morbidity 
and anemic infant will have cognitive and affective dysfunction so whenever we study any medical disorder we study what is the effect of that disorder on the pregnancy and what is the effect of pregnancy on this disorder so the effect of anemia in pregnancy is it leads to more chances of maternal complications like preeclampsia abrupt show preterm labor more uti more chances of pph and because she will not be able to tolerate the little blood loss which occurs if and more chances of chf sepsis and cerebral anoxia and fetus also are low birth weight iugr with preterm and low abgar at birth and these preterms are also prone to infections and anemia and more perinatal mortality and morbidity so what is the most critical period it is around 28 to 30 weeks of pregnancy then during labor immediately after delivery and early period period because these patients may land into chf because they may not cope up with the pregnancy induced cardiac load so these are the most critical period so what we have to see while examining a patient with anemia we have to look for her age parity what is her diet whether she is chronically bleeding because of piles or she is having hookworm infestation or malaria then on examination we will see the various grades of pallor tongue changes stomatitis is if there if there is splenomegaly it may point towards hemolytic anemia if there is jaundice because serum bilirubin is increased it may point towards hemolytic anemia purpura it will point towards if there are bleeding spots bleeding disorder evidence of chronic disease renal tuberculosis anasarca and signs of cardiac failure investigations so we will go for hemoglobin hematocrit at the first visit then 28 weeks and 36 weeks these are the minimum basics then we will do her gbp general blood picture whether it's microcytic macrocytic then we can go for the reticulocyte count in the bone marrow for the bone marrow activity so normal reticulocyte count is 0.2 to 2 percent so what are the cases in which high bone marrow activity is seen it is seen in cases of hemolytic anemia when the blood cells are being destroyed the bone marrow increases its activity to um, for protection following acute blood loss iron deficiency anemia on treatment the reticul uh, the this is how we can see the response to treatment now we have to reach at a diagnosis by various investigations so we will stain it with leishman stain so normal smear is normocytic normochromic the normal size cells and normal color rbc in iron deficiency anemia it's a microcytic hypochromic anemia it is small rbcs as you can see in the first picture these are also hypochromic they are having less color they are having anisocytosis variations in size and shape anisocytosis poikilocytosis with or without target cells and pencil cells and bar cells sometimes malaria parasites can be seen as in the last pink image in aplastic anemia less cells will be seen count will be low sickle cell sickle shaped cells can be seen in sickle cell anemia toxic granules can be seen in abnormal um leuco leukemia abnormal blast cells can be seen <laughs> target cells can be seen in cases of thalassemia now what happens to the rbc count normal rbc count is 3.2 million per cubic millimeter it is decreased packed cell volume is decreased normal is 37 to 47 percent it is less than 32 percent mcv mean corpuscular volume it is low as they are microcytic mch is decreased mchc is decreased it's also very severe indicator of iron deficiency sensitive indicator now what happens to the serum ferritin it is a marker of iron storage 
it is also reduced so basically serum ferritin is reduced serum iron is also decreased serum iron capacity is increased it is uh, normally 300 to 360 milligram microgram per deciliter so what is the percentage saturation of transferrin in iron deficiency anemia it is decreased so rbc protoporphyrin it doubles or triples in iron deficiency anemia so what we have to remember is all the serum parameters like mcv mch mchc serum ferritin transferrin saturation all are reduced only tibc is increased and iron rbc protoporphyrin is increased serum ferritin a marker of storage iron it is also decreased so how to differentiate iron deficiency anemia from thalassemia because both of them are microcytic hypochromic as you can see that mcv mch and mchc they are reduced in both of them but they are markedly reduced in cases of thalassemia hemoglobin f and hemoglobin a2 they are raised in cases of thalassemia whereas there are normal or reduced in cases of iron deficiency anemia then iron parameters there are all reduced like iron serum iron serum ferritin and iron deficiency anemia but they are normal in thalassemia tibc is increased tibc is normal in thalassemia bone marrow iron stores obviously when iron is less so storage storehouses will also be reduced erythrocyte protoporphyrin as i already told you it's increased so this is how we can differentiate iron deficiency anemia from thalassemia by the estimation of hemoglobin electrophoresis hemoglobin f e2 are increased both are microcytic hypochromic we will have to go into the history of the parents family history so what are the other investigations we go for urine and stool examination urine for rbc and cast if there is having some uti or hematuria stool examination for ova cyst and parasites and for occult blood also a bone marrow examination in cases of aplastic anemia or in cases of refractory anemia we are giving iron therapy and the patient is not responding to iron therapy and hemoglobin electrophoresis is normal then we can go for a bone marrow examination x ray chest to rule out anemia of chronic diseases like pulmonary tuberculosis blood urea serum nitrogen to see whether there is no kidney disease erythropoietin is normal or not so what is the treatment of iron deficiency anemia